Okay, let's begin. Uh, thank you everyone and good morning for joining us today for our technical webinar. Uh, today we will be co uh, covering the topic of the new normal, a healthier indoor environment. Uh, this technical webinar is being co-facilitated by our corporate members, Griffin and Carrier. So just before we begin, uh, I'd like to give a small introduction. So my name is Jason John. I work as the technical engineer uh, for the Emirates Green Building Council, and we uh, run the technical programs of the council, one of which includes our monthly educational and technical workshops. Uh, in case you are joining us for the first time, uh, just a bit of background about the Emirates Green Building Council. So we were formed in 2006 with the goal of advancing green building principles for protecting the environment and ensuring sustainability in the UAE. Our vision is for the UAE to be a global leader for sustainability in the built environment. And we achieve this uh, through our mission, uh, which is uh, for the council to act as a catalyst and for collaboration and a hub for excellence to promote sustainability of the built environment. So just a bit of housekeeping before uh, we begin the webinar. Uh, so you'll see that everyone is on mute uh, for the duration of this webinar. So you won't be on, un you will be unable to mute, uh, unmute yourself. Uh, there will be no verbal questions uh, during the webinar, but we do invite you to uh, ask your questions directly on the control panel on your right hand side you'll see there's a questions uh, tab and uh, as we're going through the webinar please uh, make sure that you just ask or uh, if you have any questions please put them down on the uh, questions tab and we will uh, towards the end of the webinar we will have a q a sessions where we address some of those questions uh, and after the webinar, we will be sharing the recording of the presentation uh, for everyone. Uh, I would like everyone to also complete the survey that we ask at the end of the webinar as you exit uh, this platform. Uh, this helps us uh, come up with the uh, rest of the technical webinars for the upcoming year. So just before we uh, hand it off to our facilitators, uh, so today we have uh, Hassan Yunus joining us from Griffin, and uh, we also have Faisal Malik and Rajesh Malik who are joining us from Carrier. Just before I hand it off over to them, just a bit more about the topic itself. So as you know, this current pandemic has obviously sort of put the uh, whole attention of the indoor air environment of uh, the spaces where we live and work uh, into greater importance and definitely uh, becomes really really uh, critical that we start looking into proper uh, operations and a proper management of our hvac systems of our of our lighting of our acoustics of our ventilation just to make sure that the people occupying them are being not only safe and protected but also being more uh, uh, happier and one of our the technical programs uh, that MS Green Building Councils run is a uh, better place for people so we serve on the steering committee for uh, the world green building councils better places for people which not only promotes buildings that are better for the environment but also better for the occupants as well so with that in mind I will now hand over the the presenter view to Hassan. So Hassan, I'm making you the presenter right now. You should have access to share your screen and you can start whenever you're ready. All right, thank you, Jason. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Hassan Yunus, the uh, director and co-founder of Griffin Consultants. Uh, we're a consultancy uh, doing MEP designs and sustainability, energy efficiency, indoor air quality. And I'm also on the ASHRAE standard 62.1 main committee. So today, uh, my presentation will be on COVID-19 and buildings, reoccupation after lockdown, especially now that we are seeing increasing cases uh, in, in some places around the world, even here in the UAE. So we thought maybe it's uh, it's a good time to um, go through the uh, guidances that have been provided by ASHRAE 
um, to help reducing uh, the uh, pandemic. So this is my email in case you have uh, any questions, further questions on the presentations. I mean, we have a Q&A uh, session uh, right after the two presentations, but just in case you have any other questions, you can uh, send an email to this email address. So the agenda of today is we're gonna talk about the modes of transmission uh, the airborne transmission, or if it is really airborne or not, uh, and the stance of ASHRAE on that, the ASHRAE guidance, uh, and then the guidance uh, specifically for commercial buildings and the guidance for residential buildings. So modes of transmission, SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, is thought to spread mainly from person to person through respiratory droplets. These droplets are produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes, affecting adjacent people. So when, whenever there's people around you that have the virus, uh, there's a great probability that uh, you will be affected um, through these droplets that are produced by these uh, people. Airborne transmission. Uh, the ASHRAE statement on airborne transmission of SARS-CoV-2 is that transmission of SARS-CoV-2 through the air is sufficiently, or there is sufficient evidence that it could be airborne exposure uh, and uh, airborne uh, transmission, and that airborne exposure to the virus should be controlled. Uh, changes to building operations, including the operation of HVA systems, can reduce airborne exposure. And also, there's a statement on operation of HVA systems to reduce SARS-CoV-2 transmission. A ventilation and infiltration provided by HVA systems can reduce the airborne concentration of SARS-CoV-2 and thus the risk of transmission through the air. Unconditioned spaces can cause thermal stress to people that may be directly life-threatening and that may also lower resistance to infection. In general, disabling of the system, the HVA systems is not a recommended measure to reduce the transmission of the virus, because we've heard uh, some uh, people saying like we should turn off the air, air conditioning systems. We know, especially in uh, hot climates like the UAE, we can't really live without them, and uh, and turning them off really will will not do uh, much, will not help that much in in reducing the airborne uh, uh, transmission. But we'll see how do you operate them properly throughout the presentation. So ASHRAE has set an epidemic task force that provided a set of recommendations and guidance to help reduce the transmission of SARS-CoV-2 aligning with the uh, CDC in the US. Recommendations differ based on the application of each building, so residential or commercial, uh, with a set of general recommendations. There are also other typologies like hospitals, uh, schools, and universities, um, and these are available on the ASHRAE website. Now moving on to the commercial building recommendations. As you know, I mean, just a, a quick um, explanation on how the virus or, or would be transmitted and um, the probability gets higher if there's a higher viral load. So if there is obviously people in the building that have, have the virus, the, the viral load will increase. So if you enter that building, um, the two things that will increase the probability. The more time you stay there, the higher probability that you will be uh, uh, getting the virus uh, and the higher the viral load. So both these things are a very important part of the equation. So there should be virus uh, or a viral load in the building. Uh, and if that viral load is high, probability is higher, spend more time there, the probability is also higher. So. Having that in mind, um, the recommendations are that uh, we should be implementing measures that help occupants first feel secure. So require occupants, visitors, and maintenance personnel to, uh, to wear appropriate PPE as per the CDC requirements. And we've seen, we're seeing this here in the UAE, uh, recommendations from the municipalities um, uh, in, in the different uh, UAE Emirates. Screen, monitor, and control the circulation of occupants and guests to help avoid transmission of disease by using thermal cameras or thermometers. We're seeing that a lot in, in malls and hotels um, and even in offices where there are thermal cameras or uh, infrared thermometers to make sure that no one has a fever uh, and to reduce the probability of ha having someone in the building that has the virus. 
and also increasing the frequency for surface disinfection on frequently touched surfaces because for my uh, transmission, I mean, although CDC now says it's not the main uh, uh, transmission mode, but it's still there's a chance that you can get the virus from touching surfaces that are infected with the virus. So it's very important to also disinfect those frequently touched surfaces. Um, reviewing main, the maintenance and operation of current HV systems. This includes modes of operation of HV systems, the sequence of operation, set points and schedules, and verifying that equipment and systems have the enhanced capabilities to address public health considerations. We're going to be talking about these points next. So, review of current HVAC systems, a set of measurements to be applied for the best operation of the HV system, including the indoor and outdoor environments inside the building, uh, follow standards 55, and uh, namely try to keep the temperature between 22 and 24, and the relative humidity between 40 and 60 percent. Uh, it has been shown that uh, viruses normally uh, become less active uh, between these conditions. Um, the, also, the issue with lower humidity is that it might evaporate these droplets. So droplets that have been uh, produced by occupants that have the virus, if the humidity is low or relative humidity is low, um, these droplets will start to evaporate, they become lighter, and the air can transmit them or transfer them uh, to longer distances. So it's not uh, recommended at all to have humidity lower than 40%. Above 60%, also another uh, problem uh, where uh, other also uh, bacteria or uh, germs can survive. So 40 to 60% is very important from a relative humidity point of view. Temperature as well should be kept between 22 to 24. A uh, review of ventilation materials, uh, checking on dampers, filter, economizer seals and frames should be intact and clean, functional, and not responding to control signals. So you don't want dirty exhaust to be recirculating back to the building. So you need to make sure that the dampers are in the required positions. Filters are there to filter recirculating air or fresh air. And making sure that you don't have any leakages around those uh, as well. Uh, zone air temperature, humidity, CO2 system sensors, as applicable, are calibrated and accurately reporting environmental conditions to the building automation system or local controllers. I was actually on a site visit uh, last week in a hotel that had uh, CO2 sensors, so demand control ventilation, and I found that some of those CO2 sensors were not calibrated, so they were showing lower values than what you have outside. So it's showing values at around 300 ppm, uh, which means that it's sending a signal that inside the room, everything is fine and no need for fresh air. And the fresh air was at its minimum uh, damper position. So it's not providing enough ventilation. So we know for sure that that sensor is giving a wrong reading because there's no way that that reading is 300 ppm and the outside is, is at higher uh, values. So in that case, uh, the recommendation is to really, uh, during the pandemic, to not rely on demand control ventilation, turning off that feature and maximizing the ventilation rates at all times, especially during occupied hours. Uh, also, we need to make sure that air handling systems are providing adequate airflow, where there are no blockages in the duct system. For example, closed fire smoke dampers that are uh, hindering air movement and the air from the air handling system is reaching each occupied space. There is no space with uh, low ventilation and we've seen, I think there are a couple of studies that happened. Uh, one of them was on a restaurant in China where uh, there was transmission beyond the two meters social distancing and it was mainly attributed to poor ventilation uh, and because there was air circulation around the, the, the restaurant, the fires transmitted further than two meters and uh, they had very low ventilation, like maybe 10% of what ASHRAE standard 62.1 requires and the exhaust also was, was very bad. Uh, so it's, it was one of the main reasons why transmission happened. We need to make sure that every, every space is properly ventilated or every occupied space is properly ventilated. Exhaust fans are functional venting to the outdoor, especially in toilets, because toilets 
are small in terms of size and uh, you could have transmission through the vent system in, in the toilet. So we've seen uh, also some cases that are uh, related to the uh, vent systems and the drainage systems in buildings. Um, so it's very important to make sure that the exhaust fans are running. Um, we see sometimes that the filters uh, or, or sorry, the, the grills are are blocked uh, and need to be cleaned. So we need to make sure that we are sending this to the outside. Now, operation of current AV systems, uh, it's recommendations to have continued operation 24 seven. That is one option. Now, in um, harsh climates like the one we have here, uh, that could cost a lot of money uh, in terms of uh, running the fans and maybe on the cooling requirements and dehumidification requirements on the fresh air. So if we run 24 uh, seven, that's gonna cost, but it is uh, a recommended uh, measure, at least during, uh, till the pandemic is over. Increased outdoor air for ventilation. So if you have, let's say air handling units and um, you have a damper uh, increasing that portion. However, you need to make sure that uh, your cooling coil can handle the extra load. So, um, you would need to do calculations to see if your cooling coil can handle the load. Normally, since most of our buildings are oversized, that shouldn't be a problem, but that will also increase your uh, cooling bill, whether it's uh, electrical or just cooling. Uh, flushing sequence, uh, if you don't want to run it for 24 seven, it is recommended to at least for a few hours, um, turn on the um, uh, ventilation after uh, working hours, so in order to reduce the viral load. Um, and then before starting uh, the building operation, maybe two or two, three hours before that, you can calculate the amount of air changes per hour and the uh, concentration of viral load. And normally we, we, we target 90 to 95% reduction. In general, two to three hours will be more than enough to um, flush out the building. So two hours after occupation, two hours before occupation, that should be enough. Uh, continuous run of toilet exhaust systems because of the uh, potential of movement of the uh, virus particles within the drainage systems. Um, if you, have, you feel that there is a room that is underventilated, um, operate, uh, getting some standalone air cleaners that have uh, really high filtration, uh, anything maybe MERV 16 to HEPA filters. Some come with UV lights. That will also help in uh, coping with uh, reducing the viral load in that particular area uh, if you don't have proper ventilation. So these are good to have. Make sure that they are uh, of enough capacity. So you cannot really have a uh, a huge office and have just one small standalone air cleaner and think that this will uh, take care of the whole space. So normally they have a limited capacity and a limited area that they can get it for. Uh, maintenance of current HV systems, filters, update or replace existing HVAC air filtration to a minimum of MERV 13. MERV 14 is preferred. Uh, so like I mentioned that the virus actually attaches itself to particles, bigger particles, and then this is how it moves uh, throughout the air systems. So we're not trying to catch the virus per se, but we are catching the particles that has the virus on them. So this is why MERV 13 can do a lot in reduction of transmission of the virus. Now, if you want to upgrade your air issues, uh, filters, make sure that the um, fan can handle the extra capacity. Uh, when you're selecting the filters, check filters that don't have a high pressure drop. So make sure that you're not exceeding the available static pressure or available pressure from your fan. Um, try to make sure, or you should make sure that the edges are sealed and you're limiting bypass uh, at acceptable levels. Um, if you have bypass around the filter, it's not, it's like, you know, you're not doing much. Uh, the, the, most of the air will be leaking around the filter because it's the lower uh, pressure drop there. 
So make sure that the, the uh, filters are properly uh, installed and um, their, the leakages are minimal. Uh, UVGI, we can use ultraviolet. Um, we can add that, as you can see this in, the, in this photo. They can help in coil surface uh, disinfection and reduction of the biofilm. So it will help keep your coil cleaner. It will help your, uh, the heat transfer coefficient of that particular coil to be better. And it also reduces um, and kills or deactivates viruses because viruses actually not living organisms, but they kill bacteria and other germs. Um, however, you need to um, select these uh, UV lights with enough intensity um, to kill the virus. So the virus or the air needs enough time to pass. So it should be slow moving airstream. Uh, so that the UV can actually have enough time to kill that. So we normally look at the intensity uh, and how, what is the dosage required from the UV light. So it's, uh, it's, it's basically related to the intensity of the light and the time um, for the air to move through that. So uh, we have these that could be installed on the UV lights, could be installed on the coils in the air handling unit, could be installed on the ducts. Make sure you do the proper design to make sure that um, the airstream just passes, doesn't pass really fast and the uh, viral uh, load is not affected. If you want to know more about that, actually we had a presentation or a course last week with, uh, with ASHRAE. Um, so I've given that course last week, three hour course just talking about that. And, and remember that the UV light's location is very important. If you put the UV light after the cooling coil or before the cooling coil, depending on the temperature, uh, the intensity of the light might drop. Uh, energy recovery ventilation systems. Uh, also, there was a lot of talk about this. Should we turn them off? Should we keep them on? Um, especially in, in with pressure handling units that have these, if we turn them off, probably the capacity of the cooling coil won't be enough to take care of the uh, whole cooling and the unification requirements during the months of maybe June to September. So we need to make sure that the pressure is always higher from the outside air side compared to the exhaust air. So if there is any leakage, the leakage is happening from the outside air to the exhaust, and not vice versa. We don't want any exhaust to recirculate back and contaminate our outside air. So the leaving supply static pressure P2 should be at least 0.5 inch greater than the entering return air steam static pressure P3 measured near the wheel surfaces. So at all times, basically SP1, SP2 should be higher than SP3 and SP4, making sure that if we have any leakage, the leakage is happening from the outside air to the exhaust and not vice versa. Uh, moving on to the residential building recommendations, they're very, very similar. Uh, I mean, houses are should be the safest places to be. This is why we're having, or we had um, um, lockdowns so that we are in houses and, and we're not really contacting uh, a lot of people and the viral load should be minimal in the house because it's only us there. Essential precautions, very similar to what we said before, maintain the normal thermal comfort conditions. Try to increase the ventilation rate. You could basically uh, keep your exhaust uh, fans running on all the time. Make sure your fan units, if you, they have a um, dedicated branch of fresh air, either from the outside or from a fresh air handling unit, doesn't go to auto mode because it's auto mode when the temperature is achieved, that, um, basically the fan turns off. So we don't want that cycling. We want the fan to be running on all the time if it's bringing out fresh air from the outside. Um, operating standalone air cleaners, that's also, especially because you know rooms and, and houses are, are not, uh, not big. So these uh, standalone air cleaners could be very effective. Increasing room air motion. So if we have, let's say a big living room and we have only one standalone air cleaner, we might need to add a fan, um, either a ceiling fan or a floor mounted fan just to move air around so it reaches that standalone air cleaner. Installing a high efficiency media filters, very similar to the commercial building. If we can increase the filter um, uh, capture capacity, 
but again, making sure that we still um, have a, uh, uh, the, the capacity of the fan can still take that filter. And like I mentioned, sometimes filters at high, what we call MERV, the minimum efficiency reporting value as per ASHRAE standards 2.2, even though some of them will have higher uh, MERV or, or let's say capture capacity, they might not necessarily have higher pressure drops. So make sure you uh, check more than one filter to come up with the one that has the lowest pressure drop. Operating systems continuously, uh, especially fresh air handling units. And this is something that I've seen in many uh, buildings where operators or um, the owner association or the, the owner of the building try to save on money during summer, especially on a turn off pressure handling units uh, because the bills really get high during summer because of the high humidity and uh, temperatures. So it's not recommended at all. It's actually against school to do that in the first place. And especially during pandemic, it's really, I feel it's a crime to turn off your uh, pressure handling units in buildings. Uh, UV also can be used in coils or in ducts or even in portable um, uh, portable air cleaners. Uh, it could help in, in killing the virus. Economizers, I don't think we have a lot of economizers in the UAE, which is mainly basically bringing in outside air to cool down um, the, uh, the indoors. Uh, since we don't have really low temperatures in the UAE, uh, I feel, I think that a couple of buildings in the UAE where we have economizers which use outside air uh, to cool down the, the, the indoors. Additional precautions, if there is a, um, a household member that is known to be infected, additional precautions are required in order to reduce the risk to other household members by creating an isolation space. So if God forbids that happens, uh, that person should be in, in a room with a separate AV system. So, and in some, let's say, residential buildings, uh, the bedrooms, let's say it's a two bedroom apartment, the bedrooms might share the same unit sometimes. If it's a high end um, place, probably it will have separate AVAC systems, so different fan coils, uh, or every room has its own fan coil. Um, if it's a one bedroom, or a two bedroom, the living room normally has a separate unit. So it's better to uh, separate that indiv individual into a separate room. Installing air barriers uh, around doors uh, so that you make sure that it's sealed and there is no transmission. Any grills that are between rooms to be sealed as well. And definitely operating the exhaust ventilation. So that happens if you have uh, someone infected in the house and um, you want to isolate yourself from them or isolate them from you, these are the recommended measures. Um, that's it for me. I'm gonna uh, turn it over now to Carrier's team. I think Faisal will start now. Thank you, Hassan and uh, Jason for having us uh, this technical uh, workshop for um, uh, Emirates Green Building Council. My name is Faisal Malik and uh, I'm the Director for Marketing Operations and Communications at Carrier Middle East Limited. Uh, we all have noticed that the world looks very different today than it did a year ago or even six months ago. All of our lives have been impacted by the global pandemic. As humans, we spend 90% of the time indoors. Consequently, buildings play a significant role in our lives and directly impact our health. Through the COG FX study, research has shown that the healthy buildings can significantly improve cognitive function. In addition, the healthy buildings can impact the bottom line for a business. Whether we are talking about reducing the energy waste or talking about related costs to increasing the workers' productivity. So today, more than ever, the technology has an important role to play in making the buildings healthy. We have an all-star lineup today for the session. First, we will have a recorded presentation of Dr. Joe Allen. Dr. Joseph Allen is an assistant professor at the Harvard T. H. Chan School of Public Health and an internationally renowned expert on the topic of healthy buildings and a leading voice in the response to COVID-19. His work has been featured 
in many publications, amongst which it includes Wall Street Journal, Harvard Business Review, Washington Post, and New York Times. Today in his presentation, we are going to learn the general relationship between indoor environment and our health. Dr. Joseph Allen and a multidisciplinary team of experts from the Healthy Buildings Program at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health have identified these key areas as the nine foundations of healthy building. So now without taking much time, I will play the video presentation of Dr. Joe Allen. Um, that's, okay, sorry. Morning to all again. Uh, thanks for joining this webinar of Healthy Building Solutions, uh, and uh, thanks for uh, thanks to EGVC for inviting you know uh, Carrier to participate in this program. Uh, at first, uh, hope everybody is well and safe. Uh, you know, with the COVID outbreak across all over. Uh, I'm Rajesh Malik, Director of Product Marketing and Application Engineering, working for Carrier Middle East. So. Uh, Obviously, you know, we didn't get to get a chance to see Dr. Joe Allen's presentation, but, you know, uh, he's, uh, he's highlighted quite a few things in terms of what are the healthy buildings, and uh, I'm going to cover some of those elements in, in the upcoming slides. So the idea over here is, in, in, as a continuation of, you know, our discussions in terms of the healthy building, uh, we wanted to point out how can we enable our customers and the building owners to execute those ideas. As people adjust to new normal, the health of our buildings and how they influence the personal health is critically important. In order to deliver like a healthy, safe, efficient, and productive indoor environment, Carrier introduced its healthy building program. And with the help of this program, we can work closely with our you know, customers to operate, maintain, upgrade buildings that protect what's most important, so the health of the occupants, those are inside the buildings. Uh, moving on, um, at Carrier, you know, we are in a good position to offer comprehensive solutions to cater to healthy, healthy buildings. Uh, we have climate control, uh, our building automation solutions, our fire solutions, which includes the detection, suppression, and advanced physical security solutions led by Lenel and Onity. Uh, with, with, with the entire portfolio, we will be able to enable the building owners to customize and execute the solutions to your needs. We bring strong domain expertise in critical operation technologies to healthy buildings and uh, I think it, it's known that carried leaders in the air conditioning uh, system with a uh, with a large footprint globally. Uh, we offer customers innovative products, dedicated services, efficient technologies, and as a result, it can impact many different factors that drive in the buildings. And some of you know the highlights of the portfolio of what we can offer today as a solution is is shown on the slide. Moving on, uh, I think, uh, as mentioned, you know, Dr. Joe Allen, his, his presentation, he was basically highlighting on the, you know, some of the key foundations in his report for healthy building. Uh, Cario Solutions has capabilities that can directly impact all the foundations of a healthy building, you know, right from ventilation, IEQ, to thermal health, you know, filtration, moisture, safety, security, and noise. All pieces are absolutely important. In the current environment, these specific strategies, you know, are, are really important and that can help to provide a safer and healthier building from the HVAC perspective as well. So we'll focus on the HVAC component, you know, uh, in today's session. Now, starting with the ventilation, under COVID, you know, situation, current situation, there are many guidelines, and Hassan, Hassan touched base on many of these from ASHRAE. Uh, there are some national and local authorities suggesting to maximize the ventilation. The idea is to dilute the air with lesser indoor contaminants, monitor the key IAQ parameters such as temperature, humidity, 
CO2, VOCs, PM2.5, and so on. In terms of moisture, our its recommendation is 40 to 60 percent. This this range is found to be very good for lowering the risk of virus transmission. So there are many areas for possible action, you know, that we can take, and I will elaborate all those in the coming slides. Uh, again, uh, you know, uh, giving the importance on the fundamentals. Uh, first of all, we need to really focus on managing the design and the construction process to achieve the good IAQ in terms of uh, controlling moisture in the building assemblies, limiting entry of the outdoor contaminants, uh, controlling the moisture and contaminants related to the mechanical system, limit uh, contaminants uh, from the indoor sources as well. Uh, we should capture and exhaust contaminants from the building equipments and the activities, related activities, and apply more advanced ventilation approaches. Similarly, you know, we can also uh, focus on designing an integrated HVAC system with a closed loop IEQ control, uh, which is highly optimized for the healthy environment. So uh, we really need to focus on uh, basically uh, the outdoor uh, air ventilation and uh, monitoring and controlling the ventilation rates to ensure the building is really achieving the desired objectives. So these are some of the foundations that were, uh, you know, spelt out more in detail in Dr. Joe Allen's presentation. And we are going to take these as our baseline in order to, you know, construct our solution offerings uh, to our customers. Carrier Healthy Building, in terms of the leadership, you know, Carrier has always been involved with the building solutions for a long time in the areas of comfort and climate control. Over the last decade or, or more, uh, CARER has been a leading voice on the occupant health, safety, and productivity as well. You know, our engagement with the green building always exceeded beyond products and technologies. Uh, just to focus on, we funded the research of the impact of green buildings and cognitive function, which Dr. Uh, you know, Joe Allen has, has done. Uh, along with the various other research, uh, you know, uh, partners uh, in the Harvard University. So we help broadening the green building movement and its impact in the industry. Uh, the, one of the latest uh, study that was funded by Carrier started back in 2014. Uh, this is the cognitive function study. And it started with about nine buildings, uh, first of all in the laboratory, and then uh, this was tested in the, uh, you know, for the, in nine specific buildings where the report came out in 2016, and then the phase two was expanded to about 30 buildings. And as we speak now, this study is further enhanced to 100 buildings all over the world. So, so uh, the, the cognitive function and its impact uh, has been, you know, Unfortunately, I'm not carrying that slide for this deck. This was part of the Dr. Joe Allen's presentation, but it greatly emphasizes upon how the enhanced ventilation is important, and you know it contributes a lot uh, to the health of the occupant and improves on the productivity. Uh, also, CAN has always been at the forefront of sustainable offering. You know, starting. Uh, we were the founding member of the USGBC. Uh, we are also a member of the International Well Building Institute, which developed the well standards for the buildings. So healthy building leadership is not new to carrier. You know, we, we have been really working on this for a long, long time. Now let's focus on and drive our uh, discussion towards the HVAC solutions, uh, going out from the concepts of the, you know, the healthy building. So what is the right path for you to start, you know, knowing the foundations that we have just spoken about? Now, as part of its healthy building program, we take a consultative and a comprehensive approach in helping our customers to know what action needs to be taken to make the building safer for occupant. Now, as the building start to reopen and bring back all the workforce into the buildings, we believe that assessment is a very good start and applying the safe start to the main equipment before the, you know, the major occupants come back to work, we can provide a range of assessments to develop a custom roadmap as the customer needs. And these are not just limited to safe start services. We can expand the, you know, 
the assessment from safe start to emergency assets and then the de more detailing on the IEQ assessment followed by a very comprehensive study which is guided by the wellness certification as a wellness assessment and the security assessment as well. On the operation side, besides the importance of the usual operations, the airside operations and other security systems, we are also recommending to leverage uh, on the available BMS and uh, you know uh, the BAS uh, uh, data to manage the IEQ, and which is done through data analytics and remote access solutions. And to maintain the high performance building operations, we have advanced services and analytic solutions for remote management and monitoring, which I'm going to you know, highlight in the coming slides. There are a lot of things that we can do in terms of the upgrade. We strongly support the idea of designing you know, the building or the equipment and the systems in the building with resilient features that can provide flexibility in terms of operations in a normal mode as well as in an epidemic mode. So it's, an, it's a very important criteria for upgrading. So any solution that we are looking at, uh, I, it, it should uh, give these kind of uh, flexibilities and the redundancies and the resilient features within the specifications. Obviously, you know, we all know that we are facing a very complex and uncertain situation. So uh, assessments and upgrade and solutions, you know, to manage, manage operations are extremely important piece to, to manage the healthy building and to convert the you know, the, the, any, any commercial, residential, or, or a hospital, or a healthcare facility into a healthy building. And there are various things that can be done to, uh, in order to do that. Moving on, let's start, uh, put some focus on the assessment piece uh, over here. Uh, in the existing building, you know, as I mentioned, it starts with an assessment. Now, Safe Start helps assure that you know your building is ready for occupancy through a rigorous commissioning of HVAC system. An implementation of the best practice practices which may include the remote management uh, you know to ensure uh, social distancing. We can look into the guidelines of HD0 you know that talks about the new construction commissioning process, the commissioning you know uh, and the ASHRAE uh, standard 202 which is the commissioning process for buildings and systems. The standards, these standards actually explain the commissioning process during the acquisition of a building. A uh, lot of emphasis is given on the importance of initiating a commissioning process during the pre-design stage so we can, uh, you know, capture the owner's uh, requirements uh, and document them, which can become a guide for verification of the successes of uh, across the different phases of the project, like which includes your design, construction, and operation, etc. Now, from the safe start, the next important piece over here is the emergency assets. Now, emergency assets, you know, we really have to scan through the building critical operational requirements, which might be very unpredictable at times, uh, or maybe in an unexpected situation. This kind of an assessment can highlight what are the redundancy requirements, uh, you know, which are really critical in nature to keep the building operational at all times based on the application again uh, this calls or also we i mean we could also bring up you know a requirement in terms of addition of the emergency equipment and to know how the building meets these requirements to help reopen very quickly and safely there are other types of the buildings according to the well standard and uh, well building standard certification is a very popular certification it's a plate that uh, can be attached to a building by going through a very comprehensive assessment process uh, this is uh, you know an advanced level of uh, and very similar uh, protocol that we follow but in, uh, uh, on a different scale uh, you know to what we do in a, in a lead assessment so we can perform well performance testing and when assessment usually includes the involvement of the building features that you know that span around air water thermal lighting ghost takes i mean every element of the building uh, that can positively impact the human health and the well-being of the occupants uh, when the service also includes Valuation of a facility, promotion of uh, you know a health and wellness, uh, potential impacts on the energy usage as well. You know, so we can ensure continued high performance operations by doing a wellness assessment. 
We further recommend, uh, you know, to carry out a very detailed IAQ or an airside audit by a specialist on all foundations, you know, what we mentioned earlier, so that we can have a baseline for your building, healthy conditions. Now, once we do the audit, you know, we need to find out what are the gaps. How can, it, how can we address those gaps, uh, maybe by doing some kind of retrofitting or upgrading it? Uh, you know, we mentioned earlier that ventilation, filtration, purification, you know, if we identify any of these gaps, we can work on the solutions. So the key is, what I'm saying is, you know, try to form a baseline on the healthy building foundations, you know, that we have discussed earlier. Moving on, uh, some of the other solutions that we offer as package uh, of uh, as a packaging you know uh, service offering from from carrier for our customers uh, this is not limited to what you see on the screen in terms of you know our capabilities in terms of providing you predictive maintenance services uh, that can help you to assess you know what is the health of the equipment that is used in the building and uh, Without letting the equipment to actually fail, we can predict what level of maintenance uh, you know uh, is is uh, required on the equipment, so that uh, we we eliminate the downtime you know of the equipment and not letting it fail uh, to that level, and we can uh, perform the preventive scheduled maintenance as well. Further on, there are some additional offerings uh, you know that can help the customers and the end users to solve various problems, whether it is related to, uh, you know, energy bills, related to sound, related to the cleaning, etc. So, area very cooling is one of those energy efficient technologies, you know, which uh, Canada can offer uh, to its customers, you know, by adopting this on the air cool chillers. Uh, there is a potential of about 30 to 40 percent of energy savings by adopting the area very cooling on the air cool chillers, and it's a proven it's proven with a with lot of case studies uh, having been done within the UAE and the rest of the Middle East as well. And uh, these case studies are, are, are credentials to make sure that the system is, is working efficiently and is maintained you know, properly. Uh, it also has a lot of embedded features in terms of the, you know, the cleaning of the water that is being used for the idea very cooling with UV protection, et cetera. So it doesn't lead to any other, you know, uh, micro, uh, uh, developed within the water circuit as well. Further, uh, we focus a lot on the sound calibration. You know, the measurement of the sound in the HVAC equipments and the propagation of the sound to AC, you know, air conditioned spaces through the grills, diffusers, or resistors. So, first of all, we need to really measure and verify the indoor equipment noise, you know, for the comfort level of the equipments. Uh, there are different types of the noise that can really disturb the occupant. It could be mechanical, vibration transmission, or probably an airflow noise. And the mechanical and vibration noise can, once we identify, you know, we can take the, you know, uh, the steps to mitigate it, whether it's replacing some sort of bear, uh, bearings or uh, motors and blowers or uh, maybe some belts or spring mounts, etc., then can lead to some vibration issues. Airflow noise can also be identified, you know, by uh, controlling and installing, let's say, a duct attenuator, VCDs, uh, some kind of suitable diffusers, etc. Furthermore, if, if a much detailed uh, enhanced study is required, so probably an acoustic specialist can do that with a specific room noise level and uh, with and without the operation of the indoor units. So to compare and you know, differentiate the noise levels while the indoor units are actually operating. And the same, uh, we can also compare with the HRI standards. Uh, one more element uh, just to focus upon, I think in, in this COVID outbreak, one of the important elements we are talking about a lot about IEQ, indoor environmental quality. And, uh, you know, our, I'm going to uh, Put some focus in the in the upcoming slides with some of the other solutions that can help to you know mitigate this issue. But duct cleaning is one of the bigger biggest element over here in the HVAC systems. Now we all know that the dust, you know, allergens, unwanted particles pass through and usually reside in the air conditioning system ducts I and mean, then within the equipment as well. And these contaminants must be removed from the ducting systems through carrying uh, you know duct cleaning at regular intervals. 
So uh, by doing the duct cleaning, we can reduce the possibility of having the allergy caused by, you know, so-called mold, fungus, mildew, et cetera. On the other hand, it also improves the overall indoor air quality and the comfort level, uh, because we all know, you know, we are spending 90% of our time indoors and our health is severely impacted by the air that we, you know, inhale uh, sitting indoors. Moving on, uh, now I wanted to share one of the very important solutions of uh, Optic Clean. Uh, you know, since since we didn't get a chance to uh, to see the Dr. Joe Allen's presentation, so I'm just expanding, the, you know, the discussions over here in order to utilize the time effectively. So, uh, the, one of the important piece and very good solutions that Carrier has, you know, introduced to the to the at a global level is Optic Clean. Now. Just last week, or about two weeks back, I think, uh, to be more precise, uh, you know, Carrier Global announced the press release that around 23 campuses in the California University purchased about 1,500 units of OptiClean. You know, this unit can actually serve two main functions. One, it can act as a negative air machine, and second, it can also act as an air scrubber. The carrier optically negative air machine is a portable solution primarily designed to help uh, convert the normal hospital room in, into an A2 room. A2 room is an airborne infectious isolation room uh, where, you know, the infected patients uh, are kept and because they can contaminate the environment. So an isolation room is basically, uh, you know, a separate room uh, which, uh, with an appropriate air handler and ventilation. Uh, to prevent any kind of direct or indirect contact uh, transmissions and for reducing the risk of airborne transmission of microorganism uh, from this patient to you know any of the neighboring or the area adjacent to this so uh, there is other type of the room uh, you know we, we usually call it protective environment room in the hospitals but those are mostly the positive pressure but here we are focusing upon the negative pressure so carrier optically negative air machine is is you know is is helping to basically uh, you know convert the hospital rooms into the A2 rooms and by using high efficiency filters HEPA filters H13 grade. Uh, I think uh, Hassan also mentioned uh, you know the importance and significance of this. It is also it is also coming with a quite and a heavy duty motor to remove the contaminants you know from the room. The what happens as the machine operates with an exhaust, you know, connected to a to a small piece of duct, you know, either it can be uh, multiple units can be combined into a single exhaust, or you can have a standalone unit for a specific isolation room uh, for, uh, you know, and the combination of the duct uh, should be combined only for the isolation rooms and not for any other areas. So the resulting negative pressure of the vacuum effects help the limit, you know, the spread of the air-based contaminants into the spread of the surrounding areas so the the unit is designed to actually standard 170 for ventilation of healthcare facilities um, and the, if the you know if the unit is not really required for uh, as a negative pressure unit such as in open air general areas of hospitals it can also be implemented in the schools malls office buildings you know gyms restaurants and many other areas where the occupancy is higher and we want to really you know keep the environment uh, you know uh, free from any contaminants or transmission uh, the machine can be used just as an air scrubber so what it does it just pulls the air in remove the contaminants and discharge the air cleaner air back into the room designing is design of this unit is extremely compact it it, you know, a unit of 500 CFM can actually serve a typical school classroom of about 500 square feet uh, with about 10 feet height. And uh, it just covers a floor area of only three square feet. This, this can actually be applied to any kind of the building. And, uh, you know, it, it's mobile with the lockable caster wheels at the bottom, so it can actually be moved to very simply to any, any location within the building as well. So this is one of the very important, you know, uh, solutions that can be applied across uh, across all applications.
Moving on, another important solution that we have developed specifically, you know, to address the, the situations in the healthcare facility is a, is a much comprehensive solution beyond the optic clean. Now, optic clean is acting as only as a negative pressure uh, unit, uh, you know, obviously uh, doing the, you know, the rightful requirement in terms of uh, filtering the contaminants, et cetera, you know, for, the, for keeping the, you know, the patients uh, in the other areas safer and avoid any kind of transmission. Uh, but the isolation room solution with an air two and the control and integrated control is a very comprehensive and a bundled integrated solution approach. And it can meet all requirements, you know, while keeping the flexibility, a lot of flexibility in terms of the components that you choose for your application. The system is able to, you know, provide a dedicated cooling, humidification or dehumidification, filtration, air movement in the A2 rooms, and it can also help to achieve the required level of uh, precise temperatures and the RH with the help of the integrated controls. Uh, it is available in the DX and the chill water option. Uh, so definitely, you know, it's 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 uh, it's designed to maintain the negative pressure in the patient room um, and avoid any kind of air contaminants from being transmitted uh, to any of the adjacent areas. The system. What we are offering over here is comprising of a supply unit, a DX condensing unit, if it is a DX uh, cooling coil in the air handler. Uh, if, if it's a chill water is available within the building, so we can just supply the air handler with a chill water coil, uh, with supply in an exhaust unit, uh, combined with an integrated control. Both the supply and the exhaust uh, side of the air handler are built with the hygienic specifications in line with, you know, VDI 6022 and then 1946. So obviously meeting those requirements. Uh, both casings are having like uh, L1 class leakage, F9 filter bypass, you know, with certified Eurovent performance. So uh, it's it's a it's a very uh, you know comprehensive solution. Now, in terms of the integrated control, uh, this is power packed basically with uh, factory fitted, uh, you know, tested and configured uh, carrier eye view uh, control system, uh, and this is fully equipped, uh, you know, to deliver the negative pressure requirement of the isolation room. This system is also comprising of the air walls, VAVs combined with a you know state of the art controller, etc and a sensor to critically read all the kind of, you know, different variables in, in the building, temperatures, humidity, DPs, you know, uh, and the air changes, et cetera. Moving on, I think uh, UV light is not new. Uh, you know, you're very familiar with the UV light, uh, uh, you know, for, for a long time. Uh, but just to import, you know, understand a little bit more in terms of the solution, what it does exactly, and what are the diff other elements that can be attached to the UV light offering? First of all, I think you know what's in our air. Air is you know uh, contributes a bigger component of the particulates. You know, which is about 35% of our allergy causes are coming from the particulates accounted uh, within the air. And one of the biggest problem in the poor IEQ in a building is the biofilm that grows within the HVAC equipment and the duct systems. Now, as you know, the biofilm is a combination of the dust, mold, fungus uh, that develops on the wet surfaces of the coil, you know, in the drain pan. And as we keep, uh, you know, the bigger uh, biofilms, uh, you know, uh, larger section of these equipments are, are uh, padding up with these biofilms, they become as an insulator, it acts as a, a reduction in the heat exchange efficiency, uh, you know, it, it basically uh, also amplifies the, you know, basically the pathogens within the building and, uh, you know, generates the aerosols uh, within the equipment. So, you know, UVC light is, UVC light is proven to be, uh, to have the sanitizing and the germicidal effects, uh, you know, and some building owners, even in the commercial building, use UVC lamps to kill the microorganism or the molds you know, bacteria, et cetera, and keep the, you know, the equipment uh, clean. Uh, obviously, UVC light is an, you know, uh, falls at about 253.7 nanometers, the shortest, the most intense, uh, you know, uh, part of the UV, UV light spectrum. Uh, you can, uh, you know, apply this upstream or downstream of the coil, depending on, you know, uh, various uh, UV light applicable within the industry. Uh, 
what is our experience is downstream of the coil is is much beneficial it keeps the you know uh, keeps the coil absolutely clean and the drain pan as well uh, besides this there are some of the other things that i wanted to highlight you know uh, today's with the you know with the much more larger expansion on the u implementation there are rapid installation kits for the retrofitting within the air handler they are also available to be retrofitted with the fan coils uh, besides that i think hasan also touched base on the intensity uh, you know of the uv light uh, which is significantly important and not just put any uv light there so you know we can have the uv radio meter in order to you know measure the intensity of those lights and over a period of you know you say these intensities usually in in the uh, in the temperatures that it get it exposed the intensity cycle goes down so we need to make sure that we kept keep checking that and uh, you know the the onus lies on the manufacturers or the supplier who supply the, who you know who is the provider of the uv light solution besides that if we are having hundreds of units within a building and if the lights uh, these some of these lamps get uh, you know uh, switched off or does not function so it's very difficult to for the occupants uh, you know or the operator to every time to come, uh, go and you know uh, look at the uv light if it's functional or not uh, even through a watch window so there is a there is a, an equipment which is called a watch dog uvc watch dog uh, so which can help you to you know really see whether the uv lights are on or not and besides that the connectors that are used are completely waterproof today moving on uh, you know other piece besides i think uvgi we have already spoken quite a lot there are other you know uh, kind of uh, technologies uh, which are available uh, out there um, i mean you are very familiar with the electrostatic filter which is having the you know a lower pressure drop than other media filters there are few other technologies for example bipolar ionization and the photocatalyst titanium dioxide air purifier these are some of very effective solutions that can inactivate the virus and some of these solutions can also be found on our white papers and you can reach, you, you can you can see them on the carrier healthy building website so the you know i i focus a little bit on the you know the uh, nbpi which is the bipolar ionization the technology is called needle point bipolar ionization uh, it is a truly an ieq revolutionizer basically it used the electronic charge to create a plasma field with a high concentration of the positive and negative ions and as these ions travel with the air stream they attach to the particles or the pathogens and help to agglomerate you know find sub microns and making them filtrable so the the ions kill the pathogens you know uh, basically uh, and uh, break down into the harmful vocs it helps in the particle reduction you know order reduction uh, and energy saving as well uh, when we look at the photocatalyst uh, titanium dioxide this is uh, this acts as a catalyst that cleans the air and uh, typically the you know the titanium dioxide that we call uh, you know sometimes call as titania it's it it is usually used in combination with the uv light so what it does it's energized the titanium dioxide get energized by the uv light and uh, as the light uh, you know uh, falls on these uh, falls on on, on uh, and activates the titanium dioxide uh, basically uh, the titanium dioxide acts as a semiconductor so uh, which is co basically covering the surface of the you know the Uh, material uh, which is usually made of uh, uh, some kind of a metal you know uh, it could be aluminum or ceramic etc so these can you know air purifier breaks apart the molecule of the air pollution you know and then uh, uh, break this into the harmless vocs so very very effective and powerful solutions in terms of the uh, filtration and purification moving on uh, just changing shifting gears a little bit uh, you know in terms of from the solutions uh, product solutions to the to the other uh, remote uh, facilities so we'll talk on the three pieces over here remote air side management which provides you know the continuous validation of the ieq equipment periodic check of equipment health continuous air side assessment which is actually enabled by a 24/7 command center 
and this includes uh, remote monitoring, remote management, etc. Remote energy management connects the HVAC, uh, you know, and the other building systems to provide, uh, you know, advanced cloud-based analytics that can help to optimize the energy efficiency and the equipment uh, uptime. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, from a building level to an occupant level, uh, we have a carrier control web-enabled solution that relays the information and data for further processing and uh, you know continuous improvement by implementing the best strategies. For example, you know beyond upgrading the building design, it's 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 absolutely important that we upgrade the facilities at the target level of you know performance with the right trade-off, especially around energy efficiency. So remote airside management uses the building automation system to remotely manage the airflow. You know, besides the, uh, you know, controlling the various parameters on the IAQ uh, level as well. Further moving on, uh, just uh, you know, one of our key product offering is the remote airside management. Now we have developed this product to cater to the healthy building landscape. Uh, this is basically about managing the air filtration, purge air, you know, IAQ ventilation, uh, which are all, you know, all, all pieces are absolutely important for the occupancy of the building. So in terms of the service, we look at, you know, leveraging the existing building automation system uh, and through a team of experts sitting in our command center, uh, we need to make sure that our air purges is air purges, ventilation rates, filter status are tracked specifically uh, so that, uh, you know, uh, we run the building in the healthiest possible way. We also have integrated BMS system with a Cortex platform, what you see on the right side of the slide, which is primarily uh, a platform to integrate a wide variety of the building data to the platform. Now, what happens using this platform, we can address multiple problem statements in our building. And a lot of time, these problem statements are fine balancing act between you know, the comfort and energy efficiency and you know maintenance versus the availability of the equipment, et cetera. So using Cortex, we harness the value from the artificial intelligence and the, deliver the same output, but now we can monitor the building on the continuous basis as against what we do uh, you know, with the blue edge code uh, wherein we look at the, where the operator or the command center usually looks at the building one or two times a day or a week. So within the two options that you see, buildings can get a handle on the, you know, indoor air quality, identify issues which are contributing to the compromise, uh, you know, any kind of compromise, and then take, uh, you know, issue the actionable items uh, for operators to fix that. One of the other pieces is the remote energy management. Uh, very pertinent option uh, for the current scenario is to look at the energy efficiency from the point of view of not putting in the capital to get the you know same efficiency. You know we we know that there are budget constraints with many building owners. Uh, this product looks to be tightening the control system, making the HVAC system very efficient, and making sure our policies related to comfort schedules are tightly implemented in the building. And uh, through that, we, we believe that there is a big opportunity uh, to take the cost out that specifically, uh, you know, considering the dynamic usage of the building. Uh, obviously, we are seeing that the occupancies are, are lower at this time, but they are going to grow up like to 70, 80% and 100% back in the next few months or so. So this, this platform enables us to take the energy out, you know, and ensure that we, we are running the building as efficient as possible. Last but not the least, uh, in order to close, uh, you know, my discussion, uh, one of the very powerful feature which, uh, you know, comes as an integrated platform as an, you know, building automation system offering of carrier is an environmental index tool. Now, this index tool basically operates to manage the temperature, humidity, CO2 levels, you know, uh, and address the healthy building performance issues. So what it does, this index, environment index, which is expressed in the percentage what you see on the screen, reflects how close is the zone temperature, humidity, CO2, VOC, you know, close to the set points, basically. And this can be accessed through a browser, you know, uh, it can easily be, uh, uh, read through an analog gauge as well, you know, using the uh, 
the segment to indicate what are the poor environmental uh, you know parameters that are not being controlled properly it's a very live and a dynamic dashboard that provides uh, real time analysis of the conditions that operators know exactly what's really going on in the system so it's ensure the building it actually don't become less efficient and remain healthy as changes are made so with this uh, i conclude my session and ho i hope uh, this session was useful to you and it helps you to drive the healthy building you know uh, uh, adaptations uh, in terms of looking at these assessment and operational pieces and looking at the potential of upgrading the you know equipment uh, and the health facility and the facilities within the building so thank you all for participating uh, i think we can open up the session for q and a perfect thank you rajesh uh, for the wonderful presentation it was really uh, informative in terms of the level of detail that you can go to into uh, not only preventing uh, for the pandemics but also promoting healthier living as well uh, so if we have about 5 minutes left over for uh, q and a so if you have any questions please feel free to ask in the questions uh, chat box um we had a question from uh, someone who are asking about uh, whether carrier had conducted any training or workshop for non technical uh, uh people for ac maintenance so uh, uh what i what i understand is uh, you mean the non technical people to do so as in they want to understand the basics of the hvac uh, portion uh, i hope the question is very clear are they looking for the technician training or they're looking for uh, you know uh, much detail i'm not sure whether uh, or not so, okay um, okay overview. okay fine no problem so uh, we usually do a lot of training programs that includes the you know the uh, for example if any customer uh, purchase an equipment from carrier there is a very detailed operational training given to the end user now whether it's a technical or non technical you know uh, personal from that side so a very detailed session is being given uh, to the end user the operation staff and the facilities involved into the building so yes the training programs are uh, you know available and uh, can be offered and please i would request please reach out to us uh, for any specific requirement and we will take uh, take a look at that perfect all right uh i'll just give it another minute for any additional questions in case there are any So just as an open-ended question uh, for all our panelists today, uh, so Hassan, Faisal, Rajis, where do you see now the trends uh, moving to in the construction industry, and as I would also mention like FM as well in terms of better uh, operations, better HVAC controls in terms of healthier space. Do you think this? is going to be a short term trend or do you think this is something rolling over into a longer period in time okay probably i can take that uh, jason yeah sure. go ahead yeah sure so you know there are i think i i mentioned in one of my slides you know there are very important pieces in in terms of you know how to uh, manage the design and the construction process now with the covid outbreak you know i think people have become very very conscious about uh, you know uh, about the facilities within the building in terms of you know the uh, adopting the right technologies uh, you know uh, in terms of controlling the moisture right level of ieqs etc you know uh, we should not have the issues of the transmission of the you know the microorganisms from one person to the other so various uh, you know strategies to be adopted within the within the systems uh, now the the other piece obviously ev everything is important and we need to make sure that all these things are taken care of why you know while looking at the design and the construction process etc so uh, the other piece of the question is that whether it is going to be you know a temporary uh, requirement or it's going to be rolling over 
you know, what I see is as we start adopting the good practices and making, uh, you know, make the systems more efficient and, you know, healthy, uh, you know, and uh, deliver a better performance to the occupants, I'm not sure these practices are going to stay over. Uh, ASHRAE has already issued a guideline uh, sometime early this year during April. You know, some of the, some of the recommendations they are, you know, where they have uh, kind of graded, uh, graded the different options, uh, solutions available out in the market. Uh, you know what 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 is backed up with the right data and uh, what has the lower uh, lower level of recommendation and uh, most likely I would also presume that there are some kind of uh, you know advancement that will happen in the in the code as well you know in terms of the leads or uh, you know lead rating for example to include lead already encourage a lot of uh, you know, give extra, uh, uh, you know, points in terms of uh, maximizing the ventilation. But I think uh, there will be def definitely be an upgrade in terms of the building codes as well. So I believe this is firmly going to stay for a very long time and probably become part and parcel of the HVAC and the related industry. Excellent. And Hassan, just from a, also from a practical point of view, you, and as many of the others in the construction industry know as well, that these sort of practices are great and they're fantastic when followed through. If you're going for certification or if you are indeed one of the special uh, typologies, like for example, a hotel, uh, sorry, a hospital that need to comply with very stringent uh, regulations. But at the same time, if something is not regulated or if it's not mandated, by by court people essentially don't do it so again what do you see what do you see in terms of practicality of people following through with what the pandemic has shown us to be of greater importance yeah, uh, yeah. thanks thanks jason i think uh, i mean the pandemic really changed uh, almost everything uh, or the way we do everything um in future, I see there will be a lot of emphasis on well-being of occupants, but also on uh, infrastructure related to data. Because now we know that data and connectivity is very important. A lot of people are working from home, and I think that will continue uh, for years and maybe forever, that we need to be very well connected uh, between team members, now, in terms of the um, requirements, in terms of well-being, ventilation, filtration, uh, all these things, definitely people want to be prepared for the next whatever is going to happen in the future, uh, similar to what uh, to the COVID-19, any other pandemics that will happen. I think uh, this will be inherited and we'll be focusing more and more on filtration, increasing ventilation, and the way to do it in an energy efficient way. So pushing the envelope when it comes to energy efficiency so we can cope with these additional requirements without suffering um, on energy efficiency and you know, still be fighting climate control. So I see a lot of focus will be also on renewables and net zero energy buildings while maintaining or having optimum uh, productivity and uh, coming from a proper environmental quality. And also, I think uh, another element that we need to um, uh, be careful about is the way we design residential buildings uh, to make it more office friendly, let's say. And uh, I think there, there will be some, some changes in the way we, we, we uh, look at residential. I think office buildings um, will maybe decline in terms of uh, the, the need for them, uh, since we've seen that a lot of companies are moving towards kind of a mixed mode. So there, there has to be more emphasis on design or proper design of residential buildings to make sure that we can operate from homes if need be. Um, and the well uh, or the, the, the well-being of occupants in residential buildings should be uh, focused on more. I feel that especially in, in the MENA region, we feel that 
Um, we don't have proper ventilation sometimes in residential buildings due to numerous reasons. So I think that will be also a, a point that needs to be considered. Absolutely, and I, I completely agree with as things become uh, more stringent in terms of increasing ventilation requirements, and definitely that will necessitate uh, the envelope in pushing NG efficiency as well. So they, they say that necessity is the mother of invention. So once people start looking at that issue in, in, in question, people will find more solutions to it as pe more and more people start to work on that particular issue. I completely agree with that as well. So I think with this, we can uh, uh, end the webinar. Thank you so much, Hassan. Thank you so much, Faisal, Rajesh, uh, for your time. Thank you, Griffin and Carrier, again, for your knowledge and expertise in delivering uh, this wonderful workshop. Uh, and with this, I would like to say thank you for everyone in attendance and your questions as well. Uh, please make sure to uh, answer the survey as you exit the platform. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.